Hello! Welcome to our September Worship Night. You can find this on both YouTube and Spotify. After this reflection, there is a playlist that is a mix of new and old songs. If you're joining us on YouTube, the link for the Spotify playlist is in the description of the video. And if you're on Spotify, the YouTube playlist can be found through the Christchurch Pearly website. I encourage you to use the playlist however you feel led. You can listen to it straight through, you can skip songs, you can repeat them, pause it or come back to it later in the week. As you watch this video and use the playlist, let Holy Spirit guide you in your response. You could sing a new song, you can dance, draw, you could write a word cloud, you could make something, you could sit completely still and in silence. No one is watching. You can be completely free. If you want to share any artwork or creations, feel free to do so on Christchurch Collective, or if you have any words and pictures for the church, please email them to the church office. So this month, we're meditating on the word champion. When listening to a song of that title, I was struck by the dual meaning of the word. The Cambridge Dictionary's first definition of champion is someone that has beaten all other competitors in a competition. Throughout the Bible, we see that God is who has victory. Throughout the Old Testament, we see battles won and people freed in his power alone. In 1 Chronicles 29.11, it says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on the earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. And the message version of Psalm 118 says, God is my strong champion. I flick off my enemies like flies. Far better to take refuge in God than to trust in people. Far better to take refuge in God than trust in celebrities. Throughout the Gospels, we see signs of Jesus bringing God's kingdom, having victory over sickness and death and the enemy. And on the cross and in rising from the grave, we see Jesus as the one who has won the final battle and has the final victory over sin and death. He is the champion. In Colossians 2, uh, 13 to 15, it says, He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. In Hebrews, it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. I wonder if sometimes we try to be the champion, the one to triumph over all others, and we also try to do it in our own strength when what we might actually need to remember to do is to live our life, the race set before us, making sure that Jesus, the actual champion, who has gone before us and made a way for us, is the one that our gaze is set on. And if our gaze is set on him, it means that we then let Jesus, who has overcome the world, go first and lead the way. The second definition of champion is a person who enthusiastically supports, defends or fights for a person, belief, right or principle. Synonyms for this include to advocate, to support and to promote. I also think of the word encourage alongside this definition. If someone fights for me or supports me or a cause I believe in, I definitely um, am left feeling encouraged. I feel that this definition of champion is an important facet of God's character. The Holy Spirit is the encourager and our advocate. In Romans 8, it talks about Jesus interceding for us or maybe advocating or championing us with the Father. I wonder if on the cross, Jesus could be seen not only as the victorious champion, but also if that moment is the ultimate example of Jesus championing humanity to love us and back us so much that he went to the cross as an offering to make us right with God. When we know that Christ champions us, we can learn to live as he calls us to be. Chosen, beloved, child, heir, 
friend, sanctified and so many other things. We are also called to champion each other. John 15 says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And 1 Thessalonians 5 says, therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. As you reflect on this word, champion, and the verses, and all that it can mean, take time to dwell on what it means for Jesus to be champion, be it triumphant victor, or advocate and encourager, or both, and think about how you can champion those around you in the coming weeks. Let's pray. Jesus, you are our champion. All victory is yours, in the world and in our lives. Thank you for saving us. Thank you that you intercede for us and that we are made new in you. As we dwell in your presence, may we be drawn deeper into all that it is to know you as champion in both meanings. Help us to champion those around us. May encouragement and advocacy be our default thoughts and words. And may that drive us swiftly into action for your glory. Amen. <laughs>